It's already a sizable position, but also paired with that downgrade on the full year outlook, it does look like they're going to hit a soft patch and primarily because of, of the bit of a downturn in enterprise compute and product-based sales. I honestly did not think of Microsoft as a cybersecurity company. That's just not the first thing I think of, but I, I mean, that makes sense. Welcome back to Chipstock Investor. Thank you to everyone who has watched our recent semiconductor industry video and maybe have purchased the Semiconductor Industry Flow 2024 manual that we published last week. If you haven't had a chance to either watch the video or take a look at this manual, links to the video and the manual are in the description. Also, thank you so much to those who have supported us via Ko-fi or with super thanks here on Google. We appreciate you so much. If you want to donate on a monthly basis, you can join the membership right here on YouTube and you get some cool AI generated badges and emojis to use in your comments. Thanks to your generous support. It makes it possible for us to continue to provide up-to-date content and education to this community. So with that, let's finally get around to cybersecurity stock investor edition at Chip Stock Investor. We're talking about Palo Alto Networks and its disappointing growth outlook. We were really busy and didn't get that video out in November, but we still need to address it. And we'll also discuss how Broadcom's acquisition of VMware may shake up the cybersecurity industry in 2024. Nick? kick us off. So first things first, Casey, Pablo Alto Networks stock barely skipped a beat after that disappointing growth outlook they provided last year. But a little bit of background to get you up to speed. Palo Alto Networks, the largest pure play cybersecurity company by revenue and market cap. Fortinet, the number two pure play cybersecurity company by revenue. We'll get to that here in a little bit. We'll give you a bigger, broader overview of the industry. But remember, Fortinet, uh, lots of hardware sales, about a 60-40 split between software and services, 60%, and hardware, roughly 40%, which includes Fortinet's custom uh, security chips that they put into their hardware-based firewalls. Palo Alto Networks, historically very similar to Fortinet in this regard, a product and hardware sales-based business under CEO Nikesh Arora over the roughly five years since he became CEO, made well over a dozen acquisitions to switch over to cloud-based security, service-based revenue. So at this point, we're going to show you some slides here. Palo Alto Networks, only about a 15% concentration in hardware and product-based revenue. 85 to 90% of revenue now software and service subscription-based sales. That's kind of just business model overview here really quick. Casey, do you want to hit us with some of the numbers from their Q1 fiscal year 2024 report that they gave in November? Palo Alto Networks actually posted a beat on their revenue guidance for the last quarter. They were estimated 1.82 to 1.85, but it ended up being 1.8 billion, 20% year over year. Now, the total billings is where we saw some fall off. They expected 2.05 to 2.08 billion for Q1 2024, but only ended up at 2.02 billion, a 16% year over year growth. Just a quick refresher on what that is. Those are invoices that have been sent to customers, but they've not been yet paid by the customers. They expected a 2024 billings growth of 19 to 20% year over year, but this has been downgraded for 2024 to 16 to 17%. Now, CEO Nikesh Arora said he expects this to be a temporary situation. The cybersecurity market still very much a secular growth market. Lots of organizations around the world still way behind updating their security practices for the modern era and especially the cloud era. You can see that in media headlines all the time where lots of organizations have missed the mark, to say the least. Uh, sometimes it's just simple human error that could have been prevented with some policy updates. Uh, sometimes it's actual out-of-date infrastructure that gets hacked. Whatever the case, probably a temporary slowdown. And as calendar year 2024 gets rolling, we think we're going to see a bit of an acceleration in revenue growth for some cybersecurity companies. So here's the slide. 
where you can see product hardware based revenue, 341 million. Again, only expect this to be 10 to 15% of total revenue in the coming year, but you can see the dramatic fall off in growth, just 3% growth in product sales year over year is the much higher growth in software and subscription services. And this is very similar to what's going on with Fortinet. As we broke down in our past videos on Fortinet specifically, product sales firewalls that go into data centers, uh, maybe it protects enterprise compute that's non-remote data center-based compute. That's where we're having the problem. And you actually see this show up in the semiconductor industry as well everything related to enterprise compute or even non-AI data center infrastructure is down for most chip companies the second half of this year. And it looks like that downturn could last through at least the first half of calendar year 2024. Check out our Marvell Technology Group video that we did a couple of weeks ago where we break down what's going on there with that company since they have a lot of exposure to that enterprise compute and market that is now in a downturn. Palo Alto Networks, the stock is currently at just over $300 per share. The market cap is $97 billion as of December 18th, and it's up over 200% in the last 36 months. And after that earnings update, the valuation is high. It's 36 times trailing 12 months free cash flow. So are we adding more to our current position? For us, we're taking a breather on this. Something to think about with this though, we've owned Palo Alto Networks for quite a few years, our largest cybersecurity holding. So that's one of the primary reasons we're on hold with allocating more money to this. It's already a sizable position, but also paired with that downgrade on the full year outlook, it does look like they're going to hit a soft patch and primarily because of, of the bit of a downturn in enterprise compute and product-based sales. And we're going to take a look at some other cybersecurity stocks instead. Before continuing, let me remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if this video is helpful as you do your own investment research and increase your knowledge of business and technology. We really appreciate the support as subscribing to the channel helps us continue putting out content like this. Let's pivot away from Palo Alto Networks and talk about Broadcom and its new acquisition of VMware. Now, back in 2019, when Broadcom acquired the Symantec Enterprise Security Segment, the remnants of which are now Gen Digital or NLOK, N -L -O -K, formerly Norton LifeLock, the company went about its typical big investment firm, modus operandi. It closed down non-strategic accounts, like small business ones, presumably, to boost profitability. This was called out by CrowdStrike CEO George Kurtz as boosting revenue growth at the time. Could something similar be in store now that Broadcom owns VMware? Absolutely. You and I both think so. CrowdStrike CEO George Kurtz really likes to call out competitors and what CrowdStrike perceives as their sometimes just not great cybersecurity practices or inferior technology or whatever. Actually, this is kind of a common practice throughout the cybersecurity market, right? CEOs love to get on these calls and talk about how they've displaced one of their competitors in acquiring these new customers. At any rate, yeah, we think something similar could be happening in 2024, like what happened in 2019. Symantec, though, was a much bigger acquisition in the cybersecurity market. Let me explain. So when Symantec Enterprise was acquired by Broadcom, that was about a one and a half billion dollar annual revenue pickup for Broadcom's existing infrastructure software during fiscal year 2020. Uh, that acquisition was a total of 10.7 billion in late 2019. So that compares with VMware now. Most of VMware staying at Broadcom to help solidify the infrastructure, enterprise, and cloud computing segment. But let's talk about the VMware cybersecurity segment, which is primarily made up of carbon black. I'm going to walk you through some of our math that I think will help you piece this together. So for reference, Broadcom's own infrastructure software and cybersecurity business, which is made up of a bit of brocade, CA Technologies, and Symantec Enterprise, is expected to be about $8 billion in revenue in fiscal 2024, a 4% to 5% year-over-year increase. The part of VMware, Broadcom CEO Hawk Tan 
says they will hold on to is expected to contribute 12 billion in revenue. So in total, 20 billion total Broadcom software in 2024. Here's what's interesting though. VMware actually hauled in about 13.6 billion in revenue in 2023. So that means about 1.6 billion is suddenly not accounted for. What's happening? Well, two things. First, VMware in 2024 is actually only going to contribute about 11 and a half months worth of revenue. VMware wasn't acquired until November 22nd. That's a few weeks after Broadcom's new fiscal year started on October 30th. So that effectively reduces a little bit of the full year revenue guidance. Okay. But then here's the second more important thing. According to Hawk Tan on the earnings call, I quote here, the non-core of end user computing and carbon black will be divested. In other words, they're going to be sold or maybe non-strategic accounts closed down. Never makes most financial sense for Broadcom. So the end user computing software is the bigger of these two segments. But for our purposes here, let's talk about Carbon Black. So Carbon Black is endpoint security software like CrowdStrike, and it was acquired by VMware in 2019. At that time, Carbon Black revenue was about $240 million. Now, assuming a 10% Hager under VMware, we think Carbon Black is probably doing somewhere in the ballpark of 360 to $400 million in annual revenue. And in fact, George Kurtz, just like he did in 2019 and 2020, has been talking about some of Carbon Black, aka VMware, VMware's endpoint security segment, some of those Carbon Black customers approaching CrowdStrike in recent months because of this pending merger that's now complete with Broadcom and Broadcom hinting all along that it was probably going to be taking a hard look at some of VMware's non-strategic assets that it didn't want. Like I said before, two things tend to happen in mergers and acquisitions. First, some of these accounts start getting antsy early on and start looking for the exit. And second, as Broadcom has now indicated it will do, it's probably going to look for a buyer for Carbon Black. What, what does this mean? I think whether CrowdStrike were to go just Carbon Black or not, some of those accounts are probably going to head for CrowdStrike, which is both the leader in endpoint security sales, as well as the technological leader in endpoint cybersecurity, according to a lot of tech researchers. Taking a look at the last Gartner Magic Quadrant for endpoint security, you can see in that top right box there, Microsoft and CrowdStrike being the leaders and visionaries in this part of the security industry. You can also see some of their competitors there, Sentinel-1, that we've talked about a couple of times on the channel. Down in the visionary box, you can see Palo Alto Networks and Broadcom with Symantec. VMware is also there. Well, maybe it would be helpful to have another refresher on what exactly endpoint security is. It's pretty simple. This is the way we like to think about it. So you probably have antivirus software on your PC. So endpoint security is very much like just a type of antivirus. The difference though is your personal antivirus on your PC is managed by you from your endpoint. An actual endpoint security platform is a type of antivirus that is managed centrally by like uh, an organization's uh, IT or cybersecurity team. And so they're able to push that to all of the different endpoints that access the company's or organization's data. And so they're actually the ones managing it versus you managing the antivirus yourself at your actual endpoint, at your PC or your laptop or your smartphone or whatever. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes total sense. Thank you for the refresher. Who's going to benefit from all of this? Let's maybe refer to this magic quadrant first. So we think CrowdStrike, and you're probably picking up the vibes here that is flipping to our favorite cybersecurity stock for 2024, as of this recording anyways. So besides CrowdStrike being a big beneficiary, Microsoft is actually giant here. You see them listed in that top right box, like you just mentioned, but it's interesting this last January, January, 2023, uh, Microsoft in their quarterly earnings update said that they had actually brought in 20 billion in annualized cybersecurity sales. That probably includes resales and distribution of other cybersecurity products besides just Microsoft's own. But nevertheless, that 20 billion was up about 33% from 15 billion in 2021. So Microsoft, an absolute giant, 
That's actually who all the cybersecurity companies, including CrowdStrike, are really gunning for. Let's take a look at that market overall. Casey, you have the bubble chart that you've put together, painted with broad strokes here, cybersecurity types uh, on the market right now. I have to be transparent here. I honestly did not think of Microsoft as a cybersecurity company. That's just not the first thing I think of. But I, I mean, that makes sense. We have things like Windows Defender on our computer and it's creeping behind the scenes. Endpoint security has a lot to do with cloud security as well. They, they work hand in hand with each other, don't they, Nick? They do. It, it really forms a total complete package for you know this modern cloud era where you, of course, need to protect your apps, your data that's housed in a data center somewhere or in a public cloud. But then you also have to protect the endpoints. The, it could be the employees, customers, whoever accessing your app, those especially employees accessing your data. So altogether, that helps form the backbone of a modern cybersecurity architecture. Flipping from your bubble chart, let's take a look at the publicly traded top cybersecurity companies overall right now. We have these categorized or ordered, I should say, from largest to smallest by revenue. And the market cap valuations are all over the board. A lot of this has to do with just flat out revenue growth paired to a lesser extent with margins, especially free cash flow, profit margins. But you can see the biggest of the big still way, way far behind Microsoft. Palo Alto Networks, 7.2 billion, Fortinet at 5.2 billion. If we were going to try to pick someone who was going to possibly acquire Carbon Black from Broadcom, from VMware, I would think Palo Alto Networks might be a good fit. You could see them on the Magic Quadrant, but as a visionary, not a leader up there with CrowdStrike and Microsoft. So I would tend to think Palo Alto Networks might see this as a good fit. Fortinet, not so much, just because they tend to focus on more organic growth. Again, a reference our last video on Fortinet, they're kind of taking their platform in a bit of a different direction than endpoints, at least at the moment. And you can see moving down this list, already the leader as far as protection platforms at 2.8 billion, but rapidly catching up to the top dogs on this list. Gen Digital, the next one that it would pass up if it continues at its 30% plus growth rate in calendar year 2024. Again, Gen Digital is the remnants of Symantec that Broadcom acquired back in 2019. A few other things in the cybersecurity industry that are going on that we haven't talked about yet Things like CDNs or content delivery networks, edge networking, and other internet infrastructure companies like Akamai, Cloudfare, and Fastly. There's cloud observability stocks like Datadog, Dynatrace, Elastic, a bit of cybersecurity from companies like ServiceNow that we've talked about in the past. There's a lot of big consolidations happening like Splunk getting acquired by Cisco and New Relic acquired by Francisco Partners. So Lots of things here that we are thinking about using as a basis for a cybersecurity industry manual, similar to this semiconductor industry manual that we have. So if you think that would be useful to you, leave us a comment and tell us that's something that you'd like. We'll put up a survey in our community board as well, so you can just hit yes or no, but hopefully that is useful to you. Nick, any final wrap-up comments here? I think at the end of the day, we're thinking here is Broadcom's acquisition of VMware and divestiture of Carbon Black, the endpoint security business, set off a round of consolidation in the very crowded cybersecurity. It's a fast-growing niche. There's going to be lots of new startups that keep popping up in this market. Um, it is a very ego-driven industry in many ways, but a very technologically advanced one and a very innovative one. But we think CrowdStrike has really differentiated itself and has the business model components in place to continue to outperform. So we like the revenue growth. We like profit margin expansion going on at CrowdStrike. That is our favorite of the moment in the cybersecurity space, putting Palo Alto Networks and Fortinet on hold for the moment, for the time being. Stay tuned for more, folks. Like Casey said, let us know if you would like a cybersecurity manual. It would probably be far smaller than the semiconductor stock manual that we did. But if you'd like that, 
if that would be useful, hit us up. As a preview for this upcoming week, we have updates on ND semiconductor and air test systems. And we'll also have a video of our top semiconductor stocks of 2024. So stay tuned, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and make sure notifications are also enabled so that you don't miss a video. We'll see you all soon here at Chipsock Investor.